All right, this is part two of the Johnson Lecture. Um, CIA, CIA was a bureaucracy, and he knew that bureaucracies were not always trustworthy. They were not always responsive to presidential direction. He saw occasional frustrations on the part of both Eisenhower and Kennedy with some of the analyses done by CIA and some of the covert, action, covert actions that were not effectively carried out. Um, he had three DCIs. First was a man named um, John McCone, who had served Kennedy. Uh, McCone wanted to have frequent personal one-on-one -on -one contact with the president. Johnson did not want that. Johnson was a big reader. He read documents, reports voraciously. He thought it was a waste of time to have to sit still and listen to a DCI brief him for 15 minutes when he could read the same report in five minutes. McCone, after a couple of years, left out of frustration with that arrangement. Next, Johnson picked a man named Rayborn, who was really not up to the job, and Johnson eased him out of the job to bring on Richard Helms. I'm sending you some links with some video and audio about and by, or featuring, uh, Helms speaking. Helms and Johnson had what I would describe as an ideal relationship. During the Vietnam War and with other difficult foreign policy crises, Helms had the sometimes unpleasant task of conveying analyses to the president that did not fit with what Johnson believed. But Helms made it very clear after he left government that Johnson had never suggested that Helms or the CIA alter their analyses. So Johnson was not politicizing them in that sense. Um, I'll just talk about the Vietnam War briefly, which became a very large um, event during Johnson's presidency. By the way, if you're wondering what happened to Mr. Kitty Cat, he's now on my lap, so I think I think he'll be good now while I talk to you. The analyses of the Vietnam War effort presided over by CIA and reflected in national intelligence estimates were always, I would say, cautiously pessimistic about the war effort. The analyses tended to say that the war would last for a very long time, and it was hard to envision when, if ever, the communist side would give up. This, of course, was uh, frustrating for Johnson to read. So I think it's fair to say the intelligence agencies were not politicizing the intelligence that they provided to the president. Of course, CIA carried out major covert actions in that war against North Vietnam. One of the interesting things about spying is that, of course, CIA spied in human and technical ways on North Vietnam. It also spied on the government of South Vietnam, our ally. Remember, I've said to you a couple of times in the classroom, one of my mantras is allies spy on allies. And so we did spy on our enemy, North Vietnam, and our ally, South Vietnam to have a better sense of what was happening in those governments and what they might do. Um, Johnson, like Kennedy and like Nixon, who would succeed him, sometimes authorized or asked CIA to spy on domestic political dissidents. He asked CIA to spy on anti-war protest movement leaders. And uh, this put Helms in a very difficult position. Helms could have said simply no, but he did not do that. He warned Johnson that this was a sensitive matter and it was outside of CIA's charter. That's the word he used. He was referring to the National Security Act. But Johnson wanted it done and Helms had it done. The reports that Helms provided to the president were not, 
satisfying to Johnson, the report said that, contrary to widespread beliefs in the U.S., the anti-war movement was in no way influenced by, supported by, directed by, subsidized by the Soviet Union or other communist countries. There were two big and, and bad incidents relating to NSA um, during this presidency. In the summer of 67, the NSA spy ship, the Liberty, was attacked. And it was attacked by a U.S. ally, Israel. Israel knew that the Liberty, this, this naval ship which was really doing NSA work, signals intelligence, was gathering information on what was happening in the so-called Six-Day War between Israel and Egypt and some other countries. Amazingly, Israel, its military, attacked this U.S. spy ship, disabled it, killed some Americans, and then Israel claimed it was a mistake. Virtually no one in the U.S. government believed that it was a mistake, but because the uh, relationship with Israel was regarded as so important, the U.S. in effect let it go, and lied in saying that it agreed with Israel that it had all been a big mistake. And then in the latter part of um, 1967, or actually it was January 68, North Korea uh, attacked and captured another ship, the Pueblo, uh, off the shores, in international water, but off the shores of North Korea. It took the ship, it took the equipment, it held the men hostage for over a year, and it, it treated them very, very badly. Right at the end of the Johnson presidency, the U.S. did secure the release of the men, but of course not the ship. One more thing about Johnson and CIA and the Six-Day War. There were a number of things that improved Johnson's confidence in the CIA and in his DCI, Richard Helms, who served from sort of midpoint 1966 until early 69 under President Johnson. Uh, during the unfolding day or two of the Six-Day War in the Middle East, Johnson, in a, in a meeting with his advisor, said to Helms, um, he called him Dick, Richard Helms. He said, Dick, how long do you think this war is going to last? And Helms said, Mr. President, I think it'll be over in a week. Well, it ended in six days. Johnson was, uh, he was very impressed.